So here it is, the Vifly R220 Mark II, or M2, I suppose it's Mark II. It's the second version of the quad that you see before you, and I'll show you the original version. Hang on, we'll do a switcheroo. Original version, new version. Original version, new version. Can you see much difference? No, I couldn't see much difference either, actually. And, uh, I wish, when they said they wanted to send me version 2 to review, I initially thought, mm, okay. And I reviewed the version 1 some time ago. I found it a, cap a capable, a competent quad, pretty good for first-time users. But of course, since then, there's been a lot of things happen, and a lot of new machines have come out, and technology's moved on. Faster motors, better flight controllers, OSDs, all the bells and whistles, and now everyone's running 75-blade props and things. So I thought, well, really? I mean, like this is a pretty standard bog. They haven't changed. What have they changed? I mean, it looks the same as the old one. What's different? Well, there's a few subtle changes. I'm going to talk about them. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about why would you buy something like this as opposed to the latest G-Wiz racing machine from your favourite Chinese retailer. And actually, after flying this again, or flying version 2, I've got to say, there are some damn good reasons to look at this. Okay, Chad Nowak, Mr. Steele, and Chapu, they're not going to be looking at this. They're not going to fly this. This is not in their league. This is a, a beginner's racing quad. And I say racing, maybe in quotes, maybe not. This is a quad for someone that wants to get into mini quad or drone racing, but doesn't want all the hassle, doesn't want all the farting around, doesn't want to have to deal with how do you set up ESCs and how do you program a flight control and that sort of stuff. This is the stuff for the man who goes to the store, buys the package, or goes online, buys the package, comes home, and just has a hell of a good time getting to grips with racing quads. Because it's so simple. It's a turnkey solution. Now, the original one, original? Second, original. The original one they sent me uh, came with a transmitter. It was a FlySky transmitter. Works really well. You know, perfectly adequate for this type of application. This one, I got them to send me a bind and fly because I've already got too many transmitters. I don't need another one. And I want to use it with my FreeSky Tyrannus. So it came with a FreeSky receiver. I think it's probably an uh, XM Plus receiver by the look of it. It's got two antennas out the back. It doesn't have telemetry. So I'm thinking it's an XM Plus. I haven't looked inside. And uh, I thought, I'll just treat this as if I was a first-time quad user and I'd bought the bind and fly package, or, or sorry, the, the ready-to-fly package. What is involved? Well... I'll tell you what's involved, and it's really complicated. You've got to screw the propellers on. You've got to put the propellers on, put these little nuts on the top. That's all you've got to do. You can go and fly the damn thing. Charge the battery, go and fly. Absolutely gobsmackingly simple, and that's what we really need when it comes to getting people into the hobby, into the sport. And this just does it. Now, it's not going to win any races at top competition level. Let's not be silly about it. It's not a highly competitive machine. But for what it does, it does the job very, very well. And let's get people into the thing. Now, it's, it's tough as boots. Look, you saw it's tough as boots. Carbon bottom frame, vertical plastic webbing here, which is, provides tremendous rigidity, albeit at a cost of some weight. Another cardboard, this is actually, uh, I think this is fiberglass on the top because it's also a circuit board by the look of it. Seems to have some stuff, maybe not, I don't know. Um, pretty bog crappy FPV antenna, but that's not quite so important because the transmitter on here can be vary between 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and 600 milliwatts. So when, when you're learning to fly these things, you really want to have a fair bit of RF power because you're gonna, you don't want to lose the video. Once you've been flying for a long time, you can actually handle with quite a bit of video dropout. It's quite amazing how little picture you need to fly. But when you're learning, as soon as you get a flicker on the video, woo, you get all scared and frightened and crash. This is designed to make it easy to learn to fly these things, and it does such a good job. It's got beta flight on the flight controller. It's an F3 flight controller, so it's stable as hell. I'm not sure if it's the same flight controller they had in the old one, but it was pretty good. But this is like super, super cool. Really, really easy to fly. I was gobsmacked. I've been flying the Shuriken. I've been flying the Bolt. I've been flying the Foxtech Lightning, and I've been flying the X-Hover Element 5, and they're all really, really good multi-rotors, good mini racing drones. And I, when I took this thing off, I expected it's going to be a bit of a pig because it's heavy and it's only got two bladed props and it's kind of um, you know, designed for beginners. But I was really quite surprised. I was not left really wanting for much at all. It, it's not super fast. It's not super agile. But it just, it's actually really, really nice to fly something that is so, it's well tuned and it's so easy to fly. You know, having something that's easy to fly, it's relaxing. I had a lot of fun flying this thing. I really, I surprised myself just how much fun I had flying this thing. And uh, as you know, I'm the head of Team Nano. I've got skills you would not believe. 
can't find them, but I got them somewhere, probably on the floor. But uh, yeah, so from the point of view of someone who wants to get into this whole mini quad racing thing, I, I'd have to say this is a this, this is a recommended buy. It really is. I didn't think I'd say it, but it is a recommended buy. What's the difference between this and the version one? Well, mainly the motors. It's now got 2205 motors, 2500 kV. So they're quite peepy. They're quite grunty. It's, it's not slow. It's not slow. It's not super fast, but it is definitely not slow. The other thing I thought I'd be a bit um, unhappy about was this camera. It's a CMOS camera, but it is a, one of the really good CMOS cameras. It works really well. I would, under most lighting conditions, you'd be hard pushed to tell this wasn't a CCD camera. So that's pretty good as well. As I say, it's got variable transmitter video power, so you can wind it right up when you want to fly you know, long distance or between behind objects while you're doing proximity. You can wind it right down if you want to fly with your friends and not interfere with their video transmission. Um, as I said, F3 flight controller running beta flight, so it is solid as a rock in the air. Um, solid construction, you're not going to break it. The battery's well protected. It has this little strap on the top, which I showed you in the original review of the first version. That really, really does protect the battery. You land upside down, you're not going to break your antenna because it's pretty low profile. You're not going to damage your battery. Man, not much else to say. Even this hole here where the battery lead comes through. Brilliant thought. Great concept. And the battery lead comes through here and plugs in there. Um, you've got your voltage displayed on there. This also has an OSD. It does have a artificial horizon. But I'm pretty sure that with some tweaking you can turn that off. Not a lot of documentation on that though. This is the documentation that's designed for beginners. You know, basically, this is the really simple stuff that you need to do to get your mini quad flying. And that's the level of documentation you want on something that is entry level, that's designed for beginners. So as a beginner's package, man, this actually, I'm, I'm impressed. It's, it's great. I would say if you want a beginner's package that is more um, aggressive, more competitive, then the Swell Pro option is pretty damn good but if you just want something that's going to be the simplest possible way in and it's going to be tough as old boots and really let's face it for the first three or four months you're going to be learning to fly the damn thing so you don't care if it's you know only does 100 kilometers an hour instead of 140 it's really not going to be an issue you're not going to be thinking oh, I wish it would go faster you're going to be thinking whereabouts did I crash so that's it I mean um, yeah I'll, I'll do a little bit more flying with this thing but I'm gonna actually be spending a bit of time flying this this weekend I really like this quad it's so nice to be able to to relax a bit and um, you know not be right on the ragged edge all the time so thank you very much for Vifly they sent this in I always disclose this was sent in for review and it really um, it surprised me I'm surprised I'm not easily surprised but I'm surprised so as I say if you are just looking to get into these things there are a lot worse options than this, I've got to tell you. If you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, I will uh, lead out this video with some more of my really crap flying of this really capable mini quad. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.